In psychology, self-development, and spiritual circles, we often use the word resourcing. To resource is to identify and to use something as a resource for something that is wanted. It is to identify something so as to draw upon it when it is needed and wanted. For example, a specific skill can be resourced to help you deal with a problem, or a specific positive experience can be resourced to help you intentionally change the way that you feel, or a specific mineral can be resourced in order to help create healing or change some element of your life, or a specific part of yourself can be resourced in order to deal with a situation in the most effective way possible, or a specific person in your life can be resourced so as to fulfill any one of your needs. However, for various reasons, many people actually have trouble resourcing. And many of the people who have trouble resourcing fall into a negative pattern that I like to call the only from you pattern. When we are gestated and during our infancy, we are experiencing a fused relationship with our mothers. It's a bit like watching two binary stars. All of our needs come through her. She's the reason that we have our sustenance. She's the person we get our intimacy from. We don't experience ourselves as being separate from her in the beginning. Because of this, the level of need we feel, and attachment we feel, and satiation we feel, and intimacy we feel, and safety we feel, and specialness we feel, and importance we feel with her is unparalleled. Naturally, as we grow and we develop and we expand, we expand into a place where we have a drive for a sense of autonomy. Essentially, we want a separate sense of self. This doesn't mean that we don't need our moms anymore. What it simply means is we want to stay in connection with them while having a sense of self at the same time. Not only that, we naturally develop into needing different things from different people. So mom is no longer the venue through which all things come to us. In fact, there are other people in our life experience, from dad, to grandma, to siblings, to peers, to teachers to mentors, all of whom offer these very special resources, which we now need. Without interruptions to this process, we end up developing into a state where we have many people in our life, all of whom offer different needed things that we can resource. And we are able to identify and use a specific person, such as their ways of thinking, their skills, their strengths, their tools, their gifts, their experiences, and their energy, that they specifically can provide us in order to thrive. When some of you heard this, you already got ahead of me. You were probably thinking, that's not exactly how it happened for me. <laughs> so what you've naturally stumbled upon is that there can be interruptions and traumas relative to this natural process. Maybe there was something about your life experience that prevented that natural fusion in that relationship and that close, intimate safety that you would have developed with your mother and therefore you have developmental trauma around that particular experience. Maybe there was natural interruptions and traumas relative to you stepping into a space of autonomy. And so you really couldn't step into that place of autonomy or you began to resource other people. There are so many interruptions, so many traumas which can occur, which interfere with this natural process. These interruptions and traumas that interfere with this natural process can easily cause a person to fall into the pattern of failing to resource and instead fixating on needing to find and secure one person for themselves to use as their only resource for everything. I've got a few examples for you to illustrate some of the patterns, and by some I mean some of the patterns that can create this pattern in your adult life. Take a person who never got that initial fusional relationship an experience with their mother because they ended up being abandoned to the system, or because their mom was totally unpredictable and thus created an insecure attachment, or because they were left in a crib for hours upon hours on end when mom was busy with other kids and other things, or because mom had to go back to work or maybe even died. This person has a developmental trauma. He or she may find themselves fixating on the idea of finding a Romeo and Juliet style love, a love that is so all-consuming, and a life that is so entirely about that one other person whose life is also so entirely about them that they will be each other's everything. This attempt to create that fusional relationship that was needed but was never something he or she had is a subconscious attempt to fill a hole where something should have been. 
a hole that has been there from the very beginning. Or for example, take another common scenario. Let's say that you've got a woman standing in front of you and she's learned over her life experience, probably even watching daddy, is that the only way to secure an actual long-term relationship, meaning the only way that she can make a resource consistently available to her, is through sex, right? So let's say that the core belief here is the only way to create a secure, lasting relationship with a man and the only way to really hook him so he's really there for you is to have sex with him. Now, this woman may decide that literally no one else can be resourced because no one else has the incentive to actually be available to her. So she doesn't resource from anyone else. Instead, she finds one man to get into a sexual relationship with and uses sex as that hook that guarantees that he is going to be a reliable resource for her. This means that he literally becomes her only resource for all of her needs. Or for example, let's imagine that a person is able to interrupt this process to such a degree that they're able to convince their child that they, as the parent, is actually the only one that's safe to resource, the only resource that the child can actually use. So the child remains completely attached and sees the parent as the only resource for them and doesn't feel safe because they've been programmed not to, doesn't feel safe to use anyone else as a resource ever. So this child may maintain this attachment to this one resource being their one parent even far past the developmental stage where that's healthy, far into adulthood. Or for example, let's say that a man grew up in a relationship situation in his original family dynamic that was so incredibly dysfunctional that he learns that all people are dangerous. Because of this, he withdraws and becomes intensely distrustful. He manages to come to see one person in his life as safer than the others and therefore attaches only to him. He resists getting any of his needs met through any other person. Instead, he demands that this one person meets them all. What all of these examples have in common is that a person has decided that there is only one person in their life who can be their only resource, sort of like their only watering hole, and that they cannot resource from anyone or anything else. This is usually, but not always, a partner. There are a great many life experiences and situations which can ultimately lead to this only from you pattern, but what all of this ends up in is a state of limitation, depletion, starvation, and a failure to truly thrive. It may make people uncomfortable to see the people in their life as a resource. After all, you live in a society, no matter where you are in this world, it essentially tells you that it's wrong to use people. But the problem with this is that people are very powerful resources in your life. In fact, it's the primary resource that other people use. Not only that, regardless of whether this is happening on a subconscious or conscious level, you're actually using people all day every day. And what's more, people actually do want to be used. When we usually use that word, to be used, we're not meaning it in the sense that I'm using it right now. But to make use of people, we're doing that all day every day. From a certain perspective, people are resources. We need each other, and as such, we use each other. A person can absolutely be a resource for something that is wanted. It is something that can be drawn on when it is needed and wanted. We use people as a source for all kinds of things. Things like connection, fun, understanding, a sense of purpose, information, contribution, physical touch, a sense of belonging, growth, support, food, shelter, a different perspective, finances, sex, communication, a feeling of safety, confidence, validation, assistance, nurturing, intimacy, and power. To be honest, the list is endless. To understand more about this, watch my video titled Using People, Ask Tale episode about interdependence. The reality is, one person cannot be your only resource. One person cannot meet all of your needs. To the opposite, you cannot be someone else's only resource. You cannot meet all of their needs, only you. You aren't actually designed this way. No one is. Because of this, we need to expand our minds and also our social spheres so as to include so many people. All these people are a valuable resource for you in different experiences in your life 
and because of this, need to expand so that we're getting our needs met and therefore resourcing many people. We need to do a few things. One, we need to powerfully decide what we need to resource from specific roles in our life, or I should say the people in specific roles in our life. This is really about properly assessing compatibility relative to people so that we can put them in the right place in our life. For example, let's say that I decide that what I need in a primary partner, meaning this is my romantic other, right? What I need in that person is availability. Now, if I know somebody in my life who cannot actually be a resource for availability, it's not right to put that person in the role of my primary partner. However, that same unavailable person might be an incredible resource for information. Therefore, I might benefit by putting this person into the role of a friend or a contact, someone that I can definitely use and call upon for information. Or for example, if you decide that what you need in close friendships is calm and quiet quality time, someone who is loud and always in motion and is extroverted may be better in the position of a more distant friend, a person who you are allied with and who can take you out of your comfort zone. Each person has to answer for themselves what resource they need from specific roles in their life. For example, using our previous example, one person might be totally fine with availability not coming from a primary partner. They may be able to get that from somebody in a position of a friend. But like we said, another person may not be fine with that. Two, we need to get squarely in reality about what the people in our life can and can't offer what we can resource from them and what we can't resource from them so that we're resourcing the right things from the right people. We will end up starving if we try to resource a specific thing from a person who does not want to or cannot actually be a resource for that very thing. To give you an example of what I mean, I have a friend who has a disability. Now he continues to find his way into relationships where eventually the women feel like he can't actually provide a sense of physical protection for them. Now I'm going to tell you this is way out of reality. Getting into a relationship with a man who is physically debilitated and then being upset that you can't resource a sense of physical protection from him sounds pretty insane, doesn't it? Another example is, let's say that a person has this deep need to resource a sense of specialness but they end up entering into the sphere of another celebrity. <laughs> that was pretty obvious that specialness is not something you can resource from within an environment surrounding a celebrity. Essentially, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to remind you of how unimportant you are and always will be compared to this other person. For this reason, it's very important to not be in an overlay. I mean, really, you can't be in an overlay. If you want to be able to resource, genuinely resource, things from people who you can get those things from. You can't be in denial about that person. You have to see each person in your life so clearly and so in reality that you know exactly what you can and can't resource from them. To learn more about this, watch my video titled Overlay, What Prevents You From Having a Real Relationship. Now this one, it is difficult though. You have to be brave enough to pop that overlay so as to see the people in your life in reality in terms of what they can and can't offer. Three. We need to start collecting people. We need to collect many varied resources for various things. This is the opposite of sitting in front of one person and asking them to be our resource for everything. To do this, we need to put energy into seeing the unique value that other people do offer, the unique resources that they provide. Four, become clear about yourself relative to resourcing. What I mean by this is become totally clear about what you want people to use you as a resource for and what you don't want them to use you as a resource for. What can you offer and what can't you or won't you offer? Relationships are not only about you using other people as a resource, they're also about other people using you as one. Find relationship configurations that are conducive to this and therefore compatible. To understand more about this, watch my video titled Incompatibility, a Harsh Reality in Relationships. When we fall into the only from you pattern in our relationships, we have a tendency to end up miserable, starved of our wants and needs, unfulfilled, and of course, disappointed. We make ourselves feel like total crap and also the other person in the relationship feel like total crap when we sit in front of them and demand that they be a resource for something that they either can't or don't want to be a resource for. We make it mean something painful about 
ourselves and also about them. Essentially, it becomes a breeding ground for shame all the way around. It's also totally counterproductive. It means your energy is going towards the wrong thing. It's a bit like walking into a hardware store and demanding that they sell flowers, and every single day you go there, they don't sell flowers, and so you sit down and hate them and get resentful about it. <sighs> like, what good is that going to do you, honestly? When we fall into this only from you pattern, we also tend to fall into this dynamic where we keep throwing people out of our life. It's like we decide that we want this one person to be a resource for this one thing, and if they aren't going to do that or choose not to do that, it doesn't matter whether it's subconscious, conscious, or whether it's something that they can't or don't want to do. It doesn't matter, right? They're not a resource for that thing. We tend to do this thing where we say, well, if you can't do that one thing for me or be a resource for that one thing, then I have no use for you whatsoever. <laughs> It's a lot like deciding that if a hardware store doesn't have flowers, then that hardware store has no place in your life, serves no purpose for you now, and never will. By doing this, you will end up completely alone and also very limited in terms of resources. So to end this episode, I'm going to leave you with a thought. Every person holds within themselves a very powerful and needed resource, or many. The question is, can you recognize what this resource is in each person that you meet? And also, are you able to resource from many of these people instead of from one? Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. But I want to personally thank you for taking the initiative and having the bravery to step into the space of awareness, not only for yourself, but for the benefit of those around you.